The title of this podcast is, Where's the Joy in Your Life? You have to create it and you have to be committed to sustaining it. And that's how it starts with how you show up every single day, what you work on inside so that you don't require external forces in the form of life or people or situations to be a certain way for you to be okay inside. The old me, oh, I was at the mercy of my likes, dislikes, preferences, and the way I think that things should be for me to experience any kind of joy. So just a quick little antidote, uh, a story of something that happened recently is I have the great privilege of working in the Office of Joy and Wellbeing at Mayo Clinic. What a great name of an office, right? I mean, right? As office. I mean, what about this? The Office of of uh, cardiac thoracic surgery and well-being. <laughs> I mean, like enjoying well-being. I mean, you name it, you can add that to it and it just raises the level. As my friend John Takuna often says, it's like, you know, Mayo Clinic has three shields, well-being, joint well-being is the fourth shield. And uh, and so we had this office of joint belt well-being. We had this retreat plan. And so we're organizing the retreat and we're coming up with the agenda and the things that we want to uh, do in terms of celebration, celebrating uh, some of the effective and successful programs and measures that we have done over the last few years, uh, celebrating all of the people that have helped make that possible. And as well as setting uh, the, the, the course for this year of the things that we want to accomplish. So in doing this, it felt like a normal meeting, right? And then my good friend, Paul, Paul Yardley says, we're the Joint Wellbeing Committee. I mean, if we don't infuse joy in our meetings, <laughs> then <laughs> how can we ask other people to do it? And that just struck me that you get into this routine of what you're doing uh, that, is like becomes your your normal behavior of how you lead a meeting, of how you enter your home, of how you do all these things, and you leave out the joy, and that's an option uh, at, at every turn. And so I just I just thought about that, and when Paul brought us all back, we start to to like really raise uh, the level of how we can infuse joy into this meeting. So we started off with our, our physician leader, you know, uh, Dr. Layden, you know, saying, hey, listen, we should have some non-alcoholic beverages here. So we got, you know, uh, some, some apple uh, juice. Uh, we got that, the Martellis, so, which is great. And then, you know, he was like, hey, we need to do more. We need to have like healthy snacks and stuff like this. And, and then Paul took us to the next level. And it's like, we got to infuse more joy with a joy, with a joy group. And so next thing you know, we're buying headbands, we got exercise dice, you know, it went to the next level. It was so much laughing in that meeting. And it all started because he made us present to that we can invoke joy and we want to invoke joy at every turn. So in your meetings at work, like get your team to start thinking of creative ways to invoke joy throughout your entire meeting. Like, like it's, it's, you can do that and it doesn't take much and it doesn't have to be something that's like in the beginning, it's an icebreaker. And then once the meeting is called to order, like all of that just kind of like, you know, vanishes, evaporates into, you know, the, the ether. No, it doesn't have to do that. Like it can continue to stay embedded and woven and integrated into the way that you communicate, the ways you talk, you can bring that to even the most, uh, the most serious subjects. So one of the things that I started to do is my friend Sharon has uh, these labs at home, two labs, uh, and their names are Riggs and and um, and, Mo and uh, Riggs and Bear. And so, I, I, if anyone knows me, I wasn't a pet person for a long time. As from a kid, there was some uh, pet owners in my neighborhood who didn't do a good job of raising their pets. So the, 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 the dogs used to chase, chase us as kids and bite us and all these other things. So I grew up with like this whole trauma around, around animals, right? So, but over time, I've had some great friends who showed me that this bias that I have, that 
I don't need it anymore. I'm around different animals. And so I can let that go. And that's a podcast in itself, right? Like the trauma that you experienced before, why are you projecting that into the present moment? Which I did. And a lot of people do the same thing. Like, for example, they go through a divorce that was challenging as a kid. And, and now 40 years later, they hear, Michael Singer tells a story, they hear about, hey, you know, Bob and Susie going through a divorce. And next thing you know, like, oh my God, what about the children? I'm like, this, what, this didn't have nothing to do with you. How did you make it about you? Like, because you're bringing that and projecting that experience to today. And so you start suffering again, but this is the unconscious behavior that we do. And I did the same thing with pets. So over the years, people have really helped me like disappear that. So now you'll see me like loving like animals and petting them and kneeling down with them and stuff like this. So my friend Sharon, I made a commitment. And if you remember many, many podcasts back, I made a commitment to Sharon that when she comes in 530 every Thursday morning to teach a cycling class for us. And sometimes uh, even with the practice, this used to be the case, it's not now because I made it a point that I was gonna show up a certain way, that when she would come in, I would be in the middle of my practice or I would be doing something for school and I would say, hi, Sharon, but I wish she wouldn't get my full attention. So over the last year, I've changed that to stop doing what I'm doing and go and greet her properly. And I've been doing that, but now I take it to the next level after talking, after Paul uh, telling us about infusing joy. So what I do that when Sharon walks through the door, I'm, I'm at the door waiting for her because I'm here setting up before and I'm sitting there like this, like I'm a lab and I'm just <laughs> wiggling my little tail just like they do when she comes in. Because, you know, if anyone has a Labrador or, uh, a retriever or a golden retriever, they're just so happy to see you when you come in and the smile on her face when she walks in that, you know, to see this playfulness going on is is uh is, is 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 really cool and it costs me nothing but it's infusing joy and so i invite you to do the same thing now you may not be you know like a lab at work but when you get home after work and you walk through the door you can do that with your loved ones with your significant other you can do that with uh you know with your children or anyone in your family and if you live alone then you can do that with your friends. But the point is, is that with every interaction that you're in, you can infuse joy into it. You can make it amazing. And it doesn't have to be situational or conditional. It can be in the energy. It can be in your smile. It can be with the, the, the pre-meeting conversation. And throughout the meeting, you still invoke it with expressing gratitude. And that there's so many things that we can do to make every moment an amazing, joyful, connected moment with other people. So again, you know, where's the joy in your life? And it's not about it being, uh, you know, it's not about it occurring for you because someone else is bringing it or life shows up in a different way. No, you infuse it, you do that. And so I really made it a point to infuse more joy in my life. And now I, there's many more spaces that I got to help. I, I got to that I have opportunities to do that with. And I'm going to continue to check them off one at a time. I'm just going to continue to go into a space. Oh, I mean, oh, this is a new space. I've been coming here all the time, but I haven't infused joy here. Let's do it here. And little by little, those are going to be, you know, things that I maintain and I continue to nurture. And so that I bring that into every space that I come into contact with in every person. So that's it, bring some joy.